what is the vertical slice architecture and why you should be using it. That's what you're going to find out in today's video. I'm going to teach you the fundamentals of the vertical slice architecture, what are the benefits of using it, and then I'm going to show you how to implement vertical slices. Before I talk about vertical slices, let's briefly mention the clean architecture with the domain layer at the core of the architecture, and then we have the application layer one level above, which contains the application use cases. We have the presentation layer, which is the entry point into our system, which basically just passes requests to the application layer, which orchestrates the domain logic. And then we have the infrastructure layer, which deals with external concerns. You will often see the clean architecture represented like this, using concentric circles. And the most important concept of clean architecture is the direction of dependencies. Mainly, all of the outer layers are allowed to reference the inner layers, but the inner layers are not allowed to reference any of the outer layers. So the domain layer isn't allowed to reference any of the layers above. However, the application layer, for example, can reference the domain layer. At runtime, this is just another form of layered architecture with some strict dependency rules. So let's take a look at the vertical slice architecture. You'll notice the same layers of the clean architecture appearing again in this diagram. We have the presentation layer on top, the application layer one level below, and then the domain layer. And on the bottom, we have the infrastructure layer, which just contains the implementation of any services. Now take a look at the vertical slices that I have here, which represent the application features that I have implemented. What vertical slice architecture does is instead of spreading out a feature across many layers of an architecture, like in the clean architecture, where we would have an entity in the domain layer, and then a use case in the application layer, and then an endpoint in the presentation layer, and possibly a repository in the infrastructure layer. In the vertical slice architecture, we will have the same classes implementing this feature, except they will all be placed closer together. This improves the cohesion of your system, where all the things that are related to our single feature are close by, as opposed to a layered architecture where the pieces for a single feature could span multiple layers. So now let's see how we're going to translate this conceptual model of the vertical slice architecture into the code. We're going to implement some features in our newsletter API using the vertical slice architecture. Now here's my starting point for this system because I don't want to be writing everything from scratch. I have my EF core database context already created and configured. We have one database set, which contains the articles, and article is our entity that we're going to be implementing features for. So it's a simple class with a title and some content, and some relevant tags that are required for filtering articles. Now let's see how we would implement a feature for creating an article using the vertical slice architecture. So here's how I'm going to structure my solution. I'm going to create a folder, which I will call features. This is my main feature folder containing my vertical slices. And then inside, I'm going to create one bigger vertical slice that is going to relate to the articles. If I have other entities in my project, I would end up creating multiple feature folders. Now inside of the articles feature folder, we're going to create our first vertical slice. There are multiple ways how you can approach this. And I'm going to show you one that is popular and that is placing everything inside of a single file. I'm going to start by creating a class, which is going to be the name of my feature, and let's call it create article. This is my starting point for my first vertical slice, which I will call create feature. So let's make this class static. I'm going to be using CQRS with mediator to implement my use cases, and I'm going to start by defining a command. So let's create a nested class inside of the create article vertical slice, which I will call command. On this command, I'm going to define the properties that I need to create a new article. So the properties are going to be a string to represent the title of this new article. And let's give it a default empty value. Then we're going to need the article content. And I'm also going to need one more property, which is going to be a list of strings, which is going to represent the article tags. So let's instantiate this property to an empty list. So this is what my create article command looks like. The next thing is going to be to install the mediator library so that I can implement my use case. 
So let's go ahead and install the latest version of Mediator. Now, if I go back to my vertical slice, I can create the next component. This class is going to be internal and sealed, and it's going to live inside of the create article vertical slice. So let's create it and let's call it handler. It's going to implement the I request handler interface from Mediator. And I first need to specify what is my request. So for that, I'll need to update my command to implement I request from Mediator. And I can optionally return some value from this command like the ID of the newly created article. So let's go ahead and handle the command for this vertical slice. And the return type is going to be a GUID. And I can already start implementing my handler. So let's go ahead and implement the handle method. And I'm going to make this asynchronous. And what are the dependencies that we're going to need inside of the handler class? So I can just inject my application database context and use it to implement the handle method. Inside of the handle method, I'm going to start by creating a new article and let's set the individual properties. I'll set the ID to a new GUID and I'll set the title to the one coming from the request, the same for the content and for the tags. And I'm also going to set the created on date and time to UTC now. All right, and then the next order of business is just saying DB context, and I can add my article, then I can say DB context, save changes async, and I have persisted the article in the database, and I can just return the article ID. So you can see how quickly we already implemented this feature, and now we can start adding some other components. First of all, let's wire up mediator with dependency injection. So I'm going to say builder services add mediator, and let's configure the mediator services. So I'm going to say register services from assembly and I'm going to pass the current application assembly to mediator. So I'm going to say type of program assembly. And with this, we already have a functioning command and command handler. And now let's expose an endpoint so that we can access this from our API. So I'm going to say public static void. Let's call it map endpoint. I'm going to make this an extension method on the I endpoint route builder, and let's use it to define our endpoint. So this is going to be a post endpoint with the route of API articles. And inside of the request delegate, I can accept a command directly from my API. I'm also going to need the I sender from mediator, and I can implement my endpoint body. So I'm going to say var article ID and let's send this command using the sender. Of course, I'm going to need to make this asynchronous and I can return the result of the command execution. So I can say return results.ok article ID. I'm also going to need to map this endpoint before the application starts. And I can say something like this. I'm going to say create article map endpoint and pass it the i endpoint route builder. We could invoke this as an extension method, but then it would be confusing if we have multiple extension methods with the same name. So a different solution could be to use the Carter library, which I'm going to install now. And it's going to allow me to define my endpoint inside of my vertical slice. So instead of the extension method, I'm going to create a class, which I will call endpoint and I'm going to implement the iCarter module interface. This interface exposes one method for adding the routes and I can just copy my endpoint definition and move it here and get rid of this extension method. And to tell the runtime to register this endpoint, I need to configure Carter. So I need to do two things. First of all, I need to say builder services add Carter. This is going to add the relevant services for this library. And here I'm going to say app map carter this is going to scan the current assembly find the implementations of the iCarter module and just call the add routes method to register our minimal api endpoint and expose it through our api so this takes care of adding the command command handler and the endpoint inside of a single vertical slice so we have a complete feature in just one file it's only 60 lines of code and everything related to this feature is inside of one file. Now imagine if this was clean architecture living in the application layer, the respective handler would also be next to the command. 
but the endpoint would live in the presentation layer. So you would have to work with multiple files to implement a single feature. Let's take this one step further and introduce some validation. So I'm going to use the Fluent Validation Library to configure my validator. I'm going to use the package with support for dependency injection and let's install it. And now I can go back to my vertical slice and I can define a validator for my command. Let's define the validator right after the command itself. So I can say public class validator, implement the abstract validator base class and specify the command as the type that I am validating. And I can introduce validation rules for my command. I'll define a constructor and I can say rule for and define a rule for the title that it can't be empty. I'll also define a rule for the content that it also cannot be empty and let's leave it like this and we also need to register our validators with dependency injection so i'm going to say builder services add validators from assembly i'm going to use the same assembly that i'm already passing to mediator so let's store that in a variable and let's pass it to the mediator method i'm going to also make it a one-liner and also to the one for registering our validators. So now our validator is going to be registered and we can use it by injecting the iValidator interface. So inside of my handler, I can say private read only iValidator of command. This is going to be my validator. I can then inject this. And inside of the handle method, I can say if validator validate or validate async depending on what type of validation you want to do. You can pass it the command and you can check if the result is valid or successful. You can also store this inside of a variable and then check if validation is not valid. In that case, you need to return a validation failure. How are you going to do that? Well, you could throw an exception, return a failure result or something similar. Let's refactor our command. Instead of returning a GUID, it's going to return a result of GUID this is a helper type that I defined and it basically just contains an is success or a failure flag and a potential error. If I go back to my vertical slice, now I need to fix my handler to also return a result of GUID and I need to update the return type of this method. So it's going to return a task of a result containing a GUID. All of this is so that I can support returning failure results. So I'm going to say return result failure of GUID and then I need to pass it a new error which expects some kind of error code and a message. There are multiple ways how you can approach this. I'm going to say create article validation as the unique code identifying this error and for the message of this error I'm going to say validation result to string. Did you notice how easy it is to make updates to our single feature because everything is living inside of the same file. Now, I also need to update my endpoint to take into account that this now returns a result. And if the result is a failure result, then I need to return a bad request. So I'm going to say return results bad request and let's return the entire error object as the result of the bad request. In the success path, I'm going to return the value of the result, which is going to represent my article ID. Updating an existing vertical slice is very easy to do because all of the relevant components, such as the endpoint, the command handler, the command itself, or the validator, all live inside of a single file. The coupling and the cohesion for a single vertical slice are very high, but we also want to keep the coupling between different vertical slices as low as possible. And the architecture itself already enforces this to a certain extent, but you also have to keep in mind not to introduce coupling between different vertical slices. With the current design I have in place, my endpoint is directly coupled to my command. If I want to separate my API contract and my command, which is my internal contract, I need to make some changes to my endpoint. And I also see that I made a slight mistake by defining the endpoint inside of the class itself. And this is going to be problematic if I want to use Carter. So I'm going to move the endpoint class outside of the create article class, and I'll make sure to give this endpoint a proper name so that I don't run into conflicts between multiple endpoints. And let's create a folder 
which is going to contain my contract. So I'm going to define a new class inside, which I will call create article request. And it's going to basically be the same as my command, but I'll be able to evolve them separately so that I can have a specific contract for my API and then a different internal contract in my command. So let's now use the create article request inside of the endpoint body. So we're going to say this is now a create article request. Let's also rename it into a request. And here I'll need to create a new command. So I'm going to say new create article and then command. And let's instantiate it from our request. So the title is going to be the request title. The content will be the request content and the tags will be the request tags. If most of my mappings are simple one-to-one -one mappings, I will usually use the Mapster library. This is one of the popular mapping libraries and I like it because it has an interesting feature which is dynamic mapping. So instead of doing all of this, I can say request and then call the adapt method from Mapster and specify what is my target type. So I'm going to map to the create article command type and now I can define my simple mappings as a one liner and then everything else remains the same inside of this endpoint. Let's now implement one more vertical slice which is going to be another feature and this one I'm going to call get article. So let's create a new class. So this will be our static class and I'm also going to define a separate class for the endpoint so this will be the get article endpoint and it's going to implement the iCarter module interface. So let's add this interface and let's first focus on the get article vertical slice. So because this is a query, I'm not going to define a command inside. I'm going to define a query class and this will be a class containing just one property which will be the article ID. It's also going to implement iRequest from mediator and it needs to return some sort of response. So let's define that response inside of my contract folder. I'm going to copy this because the response will be very similar. So let's give it a name of article response and I'm going to move it into its own file. Now I'm also going to expose a property for my article ID and two more properties for the created on and the published on date and time. So create it on UTC, give it a get and set, and also expose the published on date and time, which can be nullable, and give it a get and set. All right, now I can use this type in the get article query as the response of this query, and I can jump into implementing my handler. So this will be an internal sealed class called handler, it's going to implement the iRequest handler interface, handle the query, return an article response. I could also use the result type and return a result of article response. This will help me handle the failure case when this value is null. So let's go ahead and implement the handle method. I'm going to inject my database context because I'm going to use it directly to implement my query. So I'm going to inject this from the constructor and inside of the handle method, let's write our query. So we're going to return an article response and we're going to get that by saying await db context articles and then let's query for a specific article. So I'm going to say where article ID is equal to the one coming from our query. We're going to select our article response. So I'm going to say new article response and then map the fields one by one. So article ID, then I'm going to map the title, the content, then I'm going to map the created on and the published on date and time. And I'm also going to expose the tags back into the article response. All right, and now I can just say first or single or default, it doesn't really matter because I'm querying by the primary key and there can only be one article with this ID. So I'm going to say first or default async and then if the article response is null, I'm going to say return result failure of article response 
and I can say new error. The error code is going to be get article, let's say null, and then the message can be something like the article with the specified ID was not found. Otherwise, the article is there and I can just return it from my handle method and I satisfied this query. Now let's also map our get endpoint to fetch this article. So this will be a map get to define a minimal API get endpoint. The route is going to be API slash articles and I'm going to grab the ID of this article from the route, which I will then use in my request delegate. So GUID ID, and then this will be mapped from the route. I'm also going to need the I sender from mediator and I can implement my request body. I'm going to make this asynchronous and let's create our query, which is going to be a new instance of the get article query type. And let's set the ID to the one coming from the route. Now I can say var result and send this query using the sender from mediator. And if the result that we get back from our handler is a failure result, then I'm going to say return result dot not found. And I'm going to pass it the error that we have passed on the result object. Otherwise, we can say return results dot OK. And we pass it the result value, which is our article response. So this is enough to define my get endpoint for fetching an article. It's going to be registered directly using the Carter module, the same as the create article endpoint. And we have our query and query handler defined inside of the get article static class. As you can see, this is conceptually very similar to what I've been talking about on this channel with the clean architecture, except all of the files are now defined inside of vertical slices so that everything is in one place. And it's pretty easy to find your way around when everything is nicely encapsulated inside of a single file. Whether or not you like the vertical slice architecture, there are some characteristics that are really good, such as grouping components by the feature. And this is something that you can apply with any architectural approach, including the clean architecture. I already do this to a certain extent because I always define my command, command handler, query and query handler, and the respective validators in the same folder which can be treated as a small vertical slice. But on the other hand, I also have services that are spanning multiple layers. And this approach with vertical slices tries to keep everything together in one place. If you enjoyed this video about the vertical slice architecture, then subscribe to my channel, smash that like button, and until next time, stay awesome.